Numerical Computation, Chapter 6, Video 4. We now talk about condition number of a matrix. And this is in association with the, the stability of your solution for the system that we want to solve. Let's say we want to solve this problem, Ax equals to b. And we want to understand how stable the solution is with respect to perturbation in the data, um, where the perturbation being added is on the right hand side, on the B vector. So now we consider the perturbed system where we add a P on the right hand side, supposedly a small vector, and the solution now becomes X bar. We look at relative arrows on the arrow in the perturbation denoted by EB equals to the perturbation P here divided by the base value which is the B, the original one. We also define the relative arrow in the solution that is um, the distance between the two solutions, the perturbed one and the original one divided by the original one X. So since all these are vectors and they are measured in norms, okay? So any vector norm you can use here, say L1, L2, or L infinity. So what we want to understand now is the relation between these two arrows. In particular, how the arrow EX in the solution depends on the arrow EB in the perturbation. Okay, let's do some computation. So if we subtract the two equations here, the original one and the perturbed one, then we have the following. We have A times the difference, x bar minus x, equals to the right-hand side P, because the B cancels the B. Okay, And assuming the equation is solvable, so A inverse exists and unique, then we have x bar minus x equal to A inverse times P. So we can rewrite the arrow EX in the following way. It's the distance between x by x over x in the one, and then we use this relation for the numerator, we get A inverse P norm over X norm. And then we use the basic property of the norm, that is a matrix times a vector in vector norm is bounded by the matrix norm times the vector norm. So we get this relation. Now in this expression we see that A inverse norm we know because it's data and P norm we know because it's our perturbation. The thing that we don't know is the X norm because that's the solution and we haven't solved it yet. So next what we will do will be um, manipulate some expression to get an estimate on the term 1 over X norm. Okay, so we use the original equation, Ax equals to b, and we take norm on both sides. And then we use the relation again, matrix times vector norm is less than matrix norm times vector norm, so we have a bigger than equal sign. And then we can move the x norm to the right and the b norm to the left and write it in the following form. So 1 over x norm is less than a norm over b norm. So we now plug this new relation into the previous one we got in the last page. So this is what we had from the last page. The x is less than that. And then we keep the numerator, a inverse norm and p norm, and we write 1 over x norm to be less than a norm over b norm, which we got here. So we keep the inequality sign. And now we rearrange the terms. We put a inverse norm and a norm together. And then what we have is a P norm over B norm. And we realize that is the relative arrow in the perturbation. That's my EB. Now we see we actually have obtained a relation between EX and EB. We see that EX is bounded by this constant here times EB. Note that once A is given, the A norm and the A inverse norms are given. So these are numbers that we can actually compute. So this number here now becomes very important. So we'll denote this number by kappa of A, it depends on A, times EB. 
where this kappa is exactly this number, so A norm times A inverse norm. This is called the condition number of the matrix A. So to get an idea of what the condition number will be, we take an example of the L2 norm. Remember the L2 norm of a matrix is the um, maximum of its eigenvalue and the L2 norm of A inverse is 1 over the minimum of its eigenvalue in absolute value. So we get this expression. Now we see why eigenvalues are so important, because if you have all the eigenvalues of A, in particular if you have the biggest and the smallest eigenvalue of A in absolute value, then the ratio between those two becomes an important indication on the condition of the matrix A. We see that the smallest condition number for a matrix A will be 1 where the max equals to mean, and this will be just the identity matrix times a constant. And for all other regular matrices, normal ones, condition number will be bigger than or equal to 1. We see now the arrow in the perturbation B propagates with a factor of kappa into the solution. Let's look at some MATLAB commands that will compute these quantities for us. So, if you want to compute the norm of either a vector or a matrix, you can write norm of x. Say x is a vector. And to compute eigenvalue, the command is eig eig. And to compute condition number, it's cond, c-o-n-d. And many of these commands also take in an additional optional um, input parameters such that you could choose which norm you use. Okay, so um, check it out, go to help desk and figure out how to use all these commands. Hope that was useful and see you next time.